Hi, I'm Joey Casey. Uh, I'm a textile artist here in New York City. And today I wanted to show you uh, an introduction to some tapestry weaving. And I wanted to give you some of the supplies that you'll need for tapestry weaving, which is just some simple cardboard here. This is just some cardboard that I got from a box in my apartment building. Any packages that you get, you know, you can take that, recycle it. Some scissors. You can use a tapestry needle, or I've used some, some safety pins. And I like to use a little, a little fork. And you probably have a lot of these, all of these tools at your house, because I'm all about little to no extra tools. So if you want to make your loom here, I'm going to move these out of the way. Look, I got a little one here ready to go. Some of you can take, um, if you want, a ruler and you can mark it. That's not really my style, so um, I'm just going to go ahead and, and freehand it, okay? So I take my scissors and I go ahead and make a little cut about half an inch into the cardboard and about between half an inch and three-eighths of space in between each cut. So I'm just going to cut that and I'm going to cut a few spots. La, la, la. Okay, <laughs> so there we go, there's enough cut. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, perfect. Okay, so then I'm just gonna turn and do the other side. So you can see that I'm just gonna follow with my eyes, just follow straight down to the other side here and start making the same cuts. So about the same spacing. If you're slightly off, totally not a big deal. Everything will be okay. The world will continue spinning somehow. Okay, so let's see. Ah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Perfect. Okay, I got eight spots here, eight spots here. You wanna have the same amount of cuts on each side. The number of spaces is really up to you. I've got little ones. I've got bigger ones. And I've got even bigger ones. Okay, so you can really just do whatever you would like. So let's see, I'm gonna start with this, with this little one here. So I have brought some, ooh, out of the way. I brought some beautiful jersey yarn, a little stretchy, made out of some old t-shirts. You can probably get that at a craft store. But if not, haha, -ha, fear not, you can make it yourself. You need a t-shirt. Any t-shirt will do. Any one you're not wearing. Don't we all have a few extra t-shirts? Oh, look at mine, so nicely folded. <laughs> Ooh la la. Okay. So you're gonna take this t-shirt and you are going to cut it up. We're gonna make some yarn here. So I'm just gonna start showing you how to make this yarn and then I'm gonna get right into the weaving. So you're gonna cut from armpit to armpit, straight across. No ruler, no marking, just trust your instincts. There we go. Look at that. Making yarn. Oh yeah. It's like a small crop top. Small crop top. There we go. Really, really small crop top. Perfect for the beach. Summer vod <laughs> coming up. Everyone, look, there you go. Fashion statements right away. <laughs> See, you okay. don't waste everything. Ta-ta, bye-bye. Save that for some other use. Okay, so now I've got this big fabric tube. So I'm going to fold it in half, but not all the way. I'm gonna leave about an inch of space here left over, okay? So I'm gonna turn it this way ugh, so I can cut in a less awkward fashion. So there we go. So I've got about my inch of space here and my other fold, so I didn't fold it exactly in half. So I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna make strips about an inch wide So I got Gina here with me. She's reading some, she's reading all your comments. Oh, hello everyone. <laughs> yeah, let me know if you have any questions for Joey. So we're gonna continue cutting these inch long strips or inch wide strip I, strips, I should <laughs> say. Yeah, so I'm cutting through this lower side and I'm leaving this upper folded side connected. So I'm gonna continue doing that all the way. And look, my cuts aren't absolutely perfect. I'm not using a rotary cutter, I'm not using a marker, I'm not using a ruler. 
Ooh, the less supplies, the better. Less stuff to have to worry about, less stuff to have to clean up. Okay. So here, look, I'm gonna just go ahead and just for everyone's time's sake, just to show you the idea, look, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna finish my yarn. So there was the whole size of my t-shirt, right? We're just gonna pretend that I cut all the way down there. So look, now I'm gonna undo this part here. And look, I've got, if I pick this up, you can kind of see, it's like a little, I like to think of it, a little macabre, but I think of it like a little spine. And there's the little ribs. Can you see? Ooh, it's a little, that's a little crazy looking. Okay, <laughs> so there we go. So then now, here, ooh, looks like alien. <laughs> so here we go. So I'm gonna cut diagonally across. So from here to here, and then here to here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my first one. Are those uh, specific type of scissors? Or? Uh, these are just scissors that I pulled out of the drawer. Oh. These are my one of my kitchen scissors that Amazing. are new and sharp and nice and strong and Perfect. good for today. There's nothing that special about them. Amazing. They're just new and sharp. <laughs> so look, I'm cutting diagonally across. You see that, look, it stays connected. So you'll see here, look, I'll start pulling this and you're gonna see that, look, it's gonna continue. Oh, wow. So if you cut on the diagonal, do you know any questions, any comments? Um, I'm waiting for those comments, Is guys. anyone complimenting me yet? Is anyone saying I'm doing a great job? I am. Oh. I think you're doing a fabulous job. All right, I'm so learning look, I'm so to much. my last one here. So look, I'm gonna cut that, ta-da. And now, watch, here's the magic. I'm gonna take this, and you can see it's already starting to happen. I'm gonna pull it. So it starts curling up. Wow. So it's a little flat right now. I pull and it curls all on itself. And I pull and I love these little serge parts because they make cool textures. Caitlin says you're doing great. Thanks, Caitlin. All right. And Kate says clever. This Ooh. is clever. Also, can you use any type of shirt? Does it have to be a certain fabric? Uh, it needs to be a t-shirt, it needs to be a knit. Got it, okay, So if knit. you, you need to be a knit because look, it's stretchy. Okay. So that you need to use a t-shirt. And I think a lot of us have, you know, t-shirts maybe from an old 5K you ran. Oh yeah. I don't know, maybe from some sort of other school event. High that school. That old swim, <laughs> that old swimming t-shirt. Whatever you, you know, can't bear to get rid of, but want to use somehow, but don't want to wear anymore. So look here, I've almost stretched it all. Ugh, ugh, ugh. <laughs> And that was so quick. Okay, look, here, I'm to the end. So now look, I can just take this and I can start making it into a little ball. Oh my goodness. Da, 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 da. People love your fashion as well. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Look, la ti da So I have finished my little jersey yarn that I made all myself. That literally took two minutes? Yeah. That's amazing. There we go. Ta-da. So you wow. can knit with this. You can braid this. You can you can dye this with different fabric dyes, but that's like a whole other segment. Okay. So look, la ti da Ooh, wow. Mm -mm -mm. Ta-da. You can <laughs> buy it. You can make it. You can do both. <laughs> Magic. So I'm going to start with my, my cone here just because it's a nice long piece. And I'm gonna pull off maybe about, I don't know, a yard. So, or maybe a little over a yard. So I just like to do, just, I pull my arms out all the way to my sides and just cut that length. So it's about, I don't know, 40 and, well, my, my, my wingspan's a little bit taller than now. 40 inches, so I'm a little bit taller than, mm. you know, four feet, so that's okay. <laughs> but anyway, I just pulled out a length, about a yard would do you for this kind of small piece. So as you see in the um, in the demo, in the little spinning demo there, that we're making these really cute, small tapestry woven necklaces. So we're just gonna use a little small space here. So I leave a nice long tail to start about, I don't know, let's say six inches tail. And I put it right into that little slit that I have cut. And I just go straight down to the slit on the opposite side of my little cardboard tapestry limb that we've made. So then I come back up and I'm wrapping. So I'm not really pulling on this too. I don't need to pull this super, super, super tight, but I'm just giving it a little bit of tension so that it stays bing, bing, bing. 
nice and tight. Joey, Caitlin yeah. wants to know, can you crochet with this? Oh, absolutely. Amazing. Absolutely, Caitlin. What can't you do? Right? So here we go. So I'm gonna wrap, whoop, wrong end, wrong end. Okay, <laughs> so there's, I'm not wrapping with the tail. I've left the tail here. So I'm gonna keep wrapping until, let's see. Caitlin says, thank you. Oh, you're welcome, Caitlin. So look here, I've wrapped one, two, three, four, five, six pieces. And look, I can turn to the back and you see I've got these two long tails. So I'm gonna tie them together. So look, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna show you a little, a little tip and trick about tying a knot. So you normally tie a knot, you go under once. I'm gonna ask that you go under again to make it two. Then it really doesn't wanna come. You don't need to put your finger down there and hold it down, because look, then it really wants to stay. So if you just tie that again in a little knot, just to keep it secure, it doesn't need to be super tight. Ta-da! Ooh, cool, we have a little, a little seam there, a little texture. So Joey, Martha came in late. She wants to know what you're making. We are making a tapestry woven necklace. There you go, and Martha. Using, and this we're using some recycled yarn. I have plenty of other stuff. Look, I got some, some crazy yarn that I bought. This mm -hmm. is a great project to do with any sort of scraps. Just some, some nice pink cotton yarn. And then you're gonna see a lot of this later because I love it. Oh, beautiful. Some crazy, crazy glittery yarn. So <laughs> anytime you wanna go to a store and get, what I like to do, you don't, you know, we're not always making a sweater, we're not always doing something crazy. So I like to just get a skein or two because I like the way it looks, I like the way it feels. This is a great project to use that, to, to use those little bits of yarn that you have laying around. If you're like me and you just can't stop getting supplies, <laughs> there you go. So we have our loom here. So on our loom, the threads that are now going up and down, the vertical threads are called the warp threads. Ooh, good word. Vocab, vocab. <laughs> There'll be a test everyone afterwards. Study I'll up. expect everyone to get 100. <laughs> um, we have our warp threads here. So what we're gonna be putting into our loom, how we're gonna be weaving and creating the fabric are called the weft threads. So you have warp and you have weft. So tapestry weaving is typically a weft facing weave, which means that you see the weft more than you see the warp. So at the end of this, we're going to really not even kind of see any of these vertical gray strings. We're gonna see the horizontal weft uh, yarn that we're gonna put into our loom. So here, look, I'm gonna start weaving with my t-shirt yarn that I just finished making. So I'm showing you all with t-shirt yarn because I like that it's nice and thick. You can also here look, I have this piece here too. This is some recycled silk yarn oh, that's that I so have. Oh, pretty. So this, this I actually bought at a, at a really cool um, craft sale, but you can find this sometimes in more kind of um, artisanal shops or maybe like a craft market or something. Hmm. Um, this is all old recycled sari silk. Um, and you can see that it's sewn together here. Um, you could also just make this yourself by just ripping up strips of, you know, I don't know, small curtains or sheets or whatever, you know, an old dress or something. Yeah. And sewing them together and you can make your own things. So I'm showing you this with the, the demo weaving with the thick yarn because it's just faster. You can use, you know, something like this, the, this um, pink yarn here, we can, you can definitely use. You can even use a little thinner than this. It just takes more time to, um, to weave. And I want to show you the basics of weaving and then some other cool skills. So just for an issue of time today, I'm just going to show you with thicker yarn. And that way you can also see a little bit better. Um, if I do it with really thin, it's kind of difficult to see. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to pretend that, you know, I don't know. I only have a scrap piece. I'm just going to use maybe about two yards of this t-shirt material. Cut. <laughs> Joey, Donna says this is amazing and it's a great idea. Ooh, thanks, Donna. <laughs> okay, look, so I'm gonna get in lieu of a tapestry needle because guess what? Uh oh, uh oh, teacher, I didn't have all my supplies. That's okay, fear not, fear not. I'm just using these um, big old safety pins here. You can use a regular size safety pin, this size, whichever. Um, for this large jersey yarn, I'm just going to open it. I'm gonna pierce it through so that way it's connected and close it. Ta-da, ready to weave. Okay, the weaving shall begin. 
So we're just gonna do a basic weave structure, which is also known as plain weave. It's just an over, under, over, under, under, over, under, over. Okay, so I'm just gonna go under my first one here, over the second, under the third, over the fourth, under the fifth, and over the sixth. And you can see here, look at this. Look at this big old crazy mess. It's okay. It's a little bit crazier at the beginning. So I'm gonna pull all of my yarn through here. Look, in just this little pile right here. Until, uh oh, get out of here, silver. <laughs> You're not needed yet. It's trying okay. to sneak in. I know, it's trying to sneak <laughs> in. It always, wants to, it always wants to be seen. So I'm gonna weave until I've got this little, little tail. I'm gonna leave that little tail and we're gonna address that later. So we wanna leave a nice tail about five or so inches, maybe like six, this one, okay? So there you can see, now I'm gonna take my safety pin. So I, end, I ended on an over, so I'm gonna start with an under. And I'm going to go under here. There we go. So I'm gonna continue weaving. So, I had a fork at the beginning, many minutes ago. What, like three seconds ago? No, I had a fork at the beginning. So you see here, you see on this edge, the two sides of the weaving are called the selvage, which are the already finished sides of our weaving. And then we have the length of our weaving, which is parallel to our warp. Does anybody remember that? Did anyone I remember do. warp? Ooh, I all did. right. So look, I'm not going to, I don't need to pull very hard on my selvage. Do you see how this is coming? inward. I don't really want that. I want it to stay nice and straight. So I'm only pulling until it just starts to touch and mm. that's it. Okay. So you can go back and forth a few times. So I ended on over, so I'm going to start under, over, under, over, under. Joey, some people are wondering what DIY projects you've worked on in the past. Oh my gosh, what haven't I done? <laughs> Oof, I've done a lot of stuff. Um, well, I actually teach here in New York City a lot of different kinds of classes. Um, you can check out my website, joeycasey.com, um, <laughs> or my Instagram, Yes Please Brooklyn, for all my kind of cool stuff that I do. Uh, I teach a lot of sewing classes. Um, I teach fabric dyeing. I teach weaving. I teach felting. Mm. I teach leather working. I teach pattern making. Oh, I do so many different oh, kinds wow. of things. You'll see on my website, it says, what don't I do? That's <laughs> kind of like my, my tagline. So you see here that I've gone back and forth a few times, not pulling anything tight on my edges. I like my little pointer fork here, my little teaching tool. So there we go. So I'm gonna take my fork. If you don't have a fork, I don't know why you wouldn't have a fork at your house. <laughs> I don't know, maybe you eat out a lot and you just yeah. get that plastic takeout and you, hopefully you're recycling it every time. You can also use a comb. A little wide tooth comb is perfect. Oh, wow. So I'm just gonna take that and I'm gonna use it to push this down. There we go. Wow, this is really cool. And I'm gonna, and then I'm just gonna continue weaving back and forth. So let's say you're working on something that's really, like really small threads or really wide, and you get a little confused. And instead of, because look, I ended on an over, so I'm gonna start on a. Anyone in the comments on this section wanna tell me what I'm gonna start doing? Under or over? Anyone? 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 Bueller? Bueller? C can I take you yeah, guys? Yeah. Under. Ooh, under. That's right. Oh, but let's say I, I can't remember and you know Gina and I are just chilling, we're talking. She's also making a tapestry mm -hmm. necklace. We just, you know, we're just having a ball and I accidentally go over and then I repeat what I just did. Look, this is the worst thing that's gonna happen. Uh-oh. Hold on. Wait for it. The badness is coming and it's even not that bad. So look, all I did, oops. Oh. Oh, I just undid it. <laughs> that's the worst thing that happened. Okay, so that's not bad. Oof. So there's really no way you can yeah. mess this up. It's such a slow and methodical type yeah. process that you're A-OK. -okay. Oh, by so, the way, Maria and Barbara said under, so they were Oh, good, oh, well. good. We did it, guys. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Barbara, what would we do without you? Right. Okay, so there we go. So look, I'm gonna go, I'm just gonna go back, say, oh, Joey, so silly, pay attention. Okay. <laughs> There we go. La, 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 la. So my little tail here has gotten a little wound up, so I'm just gonna pull them out. Yeah, look, we've got a little scraggly end anyway. Ta-da. OK, 
Caitlin um, has another question about crocheting. Okay. Do you teach anything for crocheting? Do I teach anything for crocheting? No, I don't. That's one of the only things I don't currently teach. Oh, I'm sorry, Caitlin. I know, I'm sorry. But there's so many other things he does. Check it out on his Instagram. So here, I'm just gonna keep going. Look, do you see? I made a little mistake, but it's okay. I'm just gonna keep going. It doesn't matter. Because no one's really going to sit there and notice any of your mistakes. They're just gonna say, you made that? Oh my gosh, please make me one. <laughs> it's so easy, right? Yeah. And you're gonna say, yeah, it's great. You should try it yourself. <laughs> or you should say, we should do it together. Even oh, better. that's good. So look, I've just gone ahead and woven a few more rows. So I ended on an under, so I'm gonna start with an over. What was your website again? Terry's wondering. My website is www.joeycasey.com. There you go, Ooh. Terry. <laughs> You've got a fan. All right, all right. Thanks for asking, Terry. Okay, look, so look, I'm taking my fork. I'm pushing down my weft yarns here. So you can see that, look, as I said, it's a weft facing. I'm gonna put my little pointer fork down and just use my real my real pointing digits here. <laughs> so you can see that, look, it's a weft facing weaving. So look, you can really not even see much any of the, the warp yarns that we use to warp the loom. So you can just see the little over under over under pattern of the weft. So I'm just gonna continue this for a little while. I wanna know, has anyone out there done any tapestry weaving before? Hmm, has anyone done tapestry weaving before? Also, Laura wants to know, can she add trinkets and crosses and such? Oh, yes, she's... we're getting to that. Don't you worry. Oh, okay. Don't you worry, don't you worry. Laura, keep watching. I know. We got a lot to, we got a lot to cover. An hour seems like a long time, but it's very quick. She also wants to know what other mediums you can use on this project. What are the mediums as far as what? what I actually don't specific? know what that means. Yeah, I'm like, hmm, <laughs> please elaborate. Laura, could you please elaborate on what type of mediums you're speaking of? Caitlin's tried a couple of things like this in school. Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool school. <laughs> could what you kind of school, Caitlin? Oh, tell us. Wait, look at that. Rhonda wants to know, could you use strips of fabric? Absolutely. Amazing. There you go, Rhonda. Here, Rhonda, look. There we go. Strip of fabric. Strip of fabric. We'll do the same. We'll do the same thing. Maybe even a little bit thicker than my than my handmade jersey yarn here. So look, I'm gonna keep weaving. Someone says it looks like it could be a, a little purse. Oh, it definitely could. Well, I'm doing a really small scale version. <laughs> and I think it's a great way to introduce yourself to tapestry weaving because the history of weaving is very old. It's about a 9,000 year old uh, fiber activity, mm. way of making fabric. So it's been around for a really long time um, and it takes a really long time to produce. So I'm giving you a quick example, but you know, you can do a larger a much larger tapestry piece, but I thought as it's going to end up being a necklace that you might not want a really giant necklace, yeah. right? It might not be the, you don't want like a whole chest plate. You just yeah. want some, some little cute adornment, some little cute textile jewelry. Trending, yeah. trending. <laughs> okay. So, Statement necklace. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna continue weaving. And you see how my, my yarn is still really long? That's okay. And I kind of want that because you'll see, I'll explain why when we get to the next step, but it's always better to have a little bit more than not enough. I completely agree. When it comes to supplies, more is more. But I also like using scraps and other things that you would normally get rid of, so there you go. So do you think you could make a blanket with this technique? Ooh. You definitely could. It probably would take you quite a long time, or it might be really interesting if you made, it would also be a very lengthy process, but mm. if you made a bunch of these little squares, oh, yeah. and then you sewed them together, of all either on the colors. machine, mm -hmm. maybe with a little zigzag on the sewing machine, or a whip stitch by hand, kind of end to end, Yeah. Um, that could be really pretty. But you could, this, I mean, weaving, we are just creating a piece of fabric here. Yeah. That's all, that's all weaving is, is it's the creation of fabric. So you can see I'm a little bit more than halfway, halfway through. So I'm gonna continue weaving here. 
dun, 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 dun. every time. So special. <laughs> Karen says, if I use a really big piece of cardboard, I can make a throw rug, right? Absolutely. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's really cool. Um, they also have, you can look it up online, but I've also seen a, um, a tutorial for how to make a rug with a hula hoop. Oh, whoa. So you do a spiral even. Hmm. And it'd be a circle? Mm -hmm. It would be a circle rug. So instead of a square, you'd have a circle, and it's a radial oh. warp. So instead of parallel lines, it's a series of X's and you weave through all of those X's. So wow. yes, very good idea. But if you also made a giant, a giant, giant, giant uh, rectangle, you could definitely make a rug. Yeah. So I'm gonna continue weaving here. Does anyone else have any other ideas about different projects you could make with this tapestry weaving a technique? Hmm. Anyone, anyone, anyone? Gina, anyone? Um, I'm looking. Um, Come on people, see. let's get our creative juices flowing. <laughs> okay. People are really wanting to make some blankets out of these. You know what? By all means, go for it. You could probably use a really, really big, thick uh, yarn or fabric, and maybe it wouldn't take as long if the fabric. You can. So if you use thick fabric, um, my only suggestion is that you actually would need, um, you know, the spacing of your warps would need to be maybe about an inch or maybe a little less than an inch apart. Mm. And then also what you're going to work, a technique we're going to use later is you kind of need to make a little bit of um, a fake stripe. Because if you use those big, big, big pieces, you're going to have big, big, big spaces. Mm. And large spaces mean a lot of movement. Okay. So if you have a rug or something, you might not want it to move and shift around. Okay. So what we're actually gonna do, I'll show you um, a little, actually you can see it in the sample. Look, it's coming around right now, it's coming around right now. You see the red and gray striped necklace? And it's out of sight. You gotta wait for the next rotation. <laughs> uh, it's coming back, It's everyone. coming back, everyone, it's coming back. But no, you can um, actually use that, the striping technique, which I'm gonna show you um, a little later, to stripe in some thinner yarns to have it be more stable. Hmm. So you would do like two stripes of thin yarn, two stripes of thick yarn, oh, two okay. stripes of thin yarn. So the end, you don't really see any of the thin yarns, you just see mm. the thick, but okay. it's a lot more stable. Got it. Okay, so wait, hold on everyone, back to weaving, sorry. <laughs> I got distracted by circle rugs and thick yarns and everything else. Rhonda okay. said you could make coasters with this technique. Absolutely. That's that would be really cute, actually. Yeah, and table mats, Margaret, mm, brilliant. Margaret. You're hired. <laughs> Get to work. I'll send you my address after we're finished. Uh, can I give you mine too? Perfect. Okay. So there we go. So look, I'm almost to the end here. So look here, I'm going to take my, my little fork. There's a certain um, Disney movie where they use this as a oh. beautiful comb. Guess the movie, and, guys. Um, what's the movie? What's the reference? Uh, Isn't it called like a humdinger or something? In uh, the movie? Isn't that what they call it? You want to think about uh, uh, Dingle Hopper. Dingle Hopper. There you go. There you go. Guys, what's the, the movie? Hopper. Don't make me start singing. <laughs> There's an evil sea witch. <gasps> Ariel. Oh, yes, there Caitlin. We go. Perfect. The Little Thanks, Mermaid. Caitlin. Okay. A personal childhood favorite. <laughs> I always liked her clothes in that movie. When she comes up on that beach with that really amazing sail dress. Oh, loved it. Very into it. <laughs> okay, so we're just going to pretend. Look, there we go. There's my necklace. Woven. Beautiful weft facing weaving. I got my warp threads covered. My weft all showing. You can see with the jersey, it makes this really kind of pretty pillowy texture here. So now I'm finished, okay? So I'm finished with my weaving, so I'm gonna show you how to, to finish this and to make it into a necklace. So you see, I went ahead and have all this extra, so I can make my necklace all connected. Mm. Okay, so there we go, so you can see that. Look, we're gonna make a necklace for a tiny person's neck, but there we go, you can see the, <laughs> the overall idea here is that, let's see, can you see it? Oh, it'll look, a tiny, tiny person's necklace. <laughs> So there we go, a cat necklace right oh, here. Oh, perfect. There you go, right? So here, uh, to finish, look, I'm gonna take my, my either tapestry needle or safety pin, I'm gonna push it to the side. And I got my tail here where I started. 
okay? So I'm gonna flip this over. So I didn't tie my knot really tight, because look, now I can just undo it. So I can undo my knot. Oh, perfect. And there we go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and cut all of these. All of my warp threads, I'm gonna cut them, because look, then I'm gonna open up my weaving, and it's gonna have a two sides, a bottom and a top. Okay. Okay, so look, I'm gonna go ahead and cut them. But please note, come on scissors, I thought you were sharp. <laughs> okay, there we go. Cut. So now the weaving time is done. I've broken all my, all my lines of tension, and I'm ready to continue. So, there's my weaving. So you can see here, I've got where I started, this little, this is all the way down here, this is my first warp string. Can you see it, can you see it, can you see it? There we go. La -ta -da. So I'm gonna take that, and I'm gonna pull, I'm leaving all these strings in where they are, because I don't want anything to move around. If I were to pull all of these out right now, my weaving's all loose on the ends, none of this is secured, none of this is secured. I don't want any of my hard work to start coming I'm oh, done. Okay. So I'm just gonna take a, a few at a time. Okay. So I'm gonna take this first tail and my first warp string. Undo. Look, here we go. You see, look, this is now loose. Loosey goosey. Oh. So I'm gonna take those and I'm gonna tie them into a knot. Just a simple single knot. So those are, look, now it's already kind of a little bit more locked in place. So now I have my, so now I'm gonna treat those two as one. So they're together as one string. Okay. How do you know, how do you make the base you're using? Oh, so look, okay, I got a question from Margaret. So Margaret, look, I just take this piece of cardboard. This was the cardboard that someone was just recycling. I think it was someone's old presentation materials and I said, thanks. <laughs> so I took it, I live in an apartment building. I don't know if everyone else lives in an apartment building, but we have a recycling room. So I went and got this cardboard, cut it up. Brilliant. Just went and snip, 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 snip. Cut them into these shapes. No ruler, no nothing. Just eyeballed it. And then I went ahead and cut my slits in here about half an inch down and about half an inch apart and repeated on the other side. So the same number of slits on both sides. Would this work also for kids' toys, such as a rag doll? Like to make a rag doll? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So look, here's your ragdoll's head right here. There you go, Marie. There you go. Just change the color. Maybe you don't want a gray face ragdoll. Yeah. Maybe you do, I don't know. Yeah. Cool, like a spooky black and white Ooh, or yeah. like a, you know, I don't know, some sort of cool animation. Mm -hmm. So look here, back to, back to the finishing, back to the finishing. So you see I got all my ends here, I got all my ends here. So I, I just tied the first tail and the first warp string together. So now I'm gonna treat them as one. So mm -hmm. now I've got my second warp string. Pop. So these are one, and this is one, okay? So you can see that I did this on an even number of strings. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I take these two, so I'm gonna tie in groups of two. So I take these two, look, I'm gonna trim this guy a little shorter because it doesn't need to be so long. Get out of here, okay. I'm gonna tie these together in a double knot. Allison wants to know if you could, um, sorry, Angela, if you could make a dish rag out of this. Oh yeah, that would be nice. You can already see the look, the texture of this. It's a little spongy, very absorbent, machine washable. Amazing. Machine dryable. Perfect. Oh, that's so so there we go, great. look, you can see this is already secure. So now I did my first two. So now I'm gonna undo my second two. So you can see here, look, I got my second two here. I'm gonna tie them in a knot once, and again, twice, so a double knot. What about a bathing suit? Kathy Ooh. was wondering. Oh girl, yes, maybe. <laughs> well, uh, that's a whole other lesson. You can make this actually into a, sh you can weave into a different shape. It doesn't have to be a rectangle oh. or a square. So that's a whole other, that, this, that'll be part two. You'll have to stay, okay. stay tuned, stay tuned. We'll, okay. do, we'll do an on-screen uh, woven bathing suit. Sweet. The only other thing I might suggest, unless you're really an exhibitionist, is maybe giving it a slight little backing, just in case you've got <laughs> any little, you know, poke-throughs or anything going on. But yeah, totally, for sure. Okay, so first knot tied, second knot tied. 
Six divided by two is three. So all three groups. Whoa, math really helps. <laughs> so there you go. In my double knot. And you see I'm not pulling these super tight because I don't need to make this warp length any shorter. I'm just pulling until I hit those first weft threads. So I've tied it in a single knot and I tie it in my double knot. And then, can you believe it or not, we're gonna go ahead, ha ha, pun. <laughs> Punny. Okay, so guess what, ta-da, repeat on the same, repeat the same thing on the other side. So some of these have already started coming undone just from my rustling around and discussing bathing suit options and everything <laughs> like that. Some are bod, get it ready, okay. <laughs> so I'm gonna take these, so, so this is now the top of my necklace. So I've decided that that's the bottom and this is the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave this first one out because we're gonna tie that to make, to, to make the loop for the necklace, to make the, the, the chain of sorts, okay? So that's the top of my weaving and that's the bottom. I could go ahead and say that this could also be the top if I wanted to, but these have little short strings and these have longer strings. And I'm just saying, because this is all the same, I made no sort of design, but that's my top. Hmm. So look, I've still got, so I got one, one, and I got four here in the middle. So I'm gonna go ahead and tie those together, just like I did on the bottom. So a single knot. What about a phone case? A phone case? Ooh, I don't know. I mean, you probably could, but you probably have to adhere it to an existing phone case, mm, like a clear like one? A, yes. Like maybe yeah. using some sort of like strong glue or something? Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. That could, that could work, that could definitely work. I mean, what aren't, what can't you do? Right? We've come okay, up with so, so many Okay, so single things. knot, Whoop. double knot. Oh, Laura came back with some medium options. Oh, Laura, what are, what are these mediums? Such as other yarns, foil, cotter, material, floral, striped. What's that? Yeah. I'll take it. <laughs> cotter, material, floral, striped. That Very sounds into interesting. It. Very into it. Yeah, you can definitely use all those other mediums. You can definitely use any yarn you'd like, any fabric. Any foiled yarn? Oh, hold on, I have some foiled yarn in my bag. Speaking of foil, ugh. Oh, thank come goodness. Come on, I, I gotta wondering. get my goodies. Oh, I've got so much fabric in here and yarn. Ooh, look here. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Allison said you can make a change purse. Oh, absolutely. Here, look, other yarns. I brought so many supplies, everyone. <gasps> I overpacked <laughs> some really cool silk spun old silk threads. Ooh, yeah, yeah, look at that all, all kind of so fray pretty. and beautiful. It's really beautiful kind of sheer ribbon oh, wow. yarn that I have. See, I collect all these little, little textiles. And this is one of my faves, oh. this really beautiful wool, crazy wool yarn that I got in Paris, so. <gasps> oh my God. Look, I love this, look how it's connected and not connected. Wow. So pretty. Yeah. So yeah, you can use really any kind of medium that you like. I would say experiment. Go ahead, try it, try something new. You can work on this small surface, so. Ugh, oh, come on. Yes, and post pictures and tag Joey yeah, yeah, in yeah. it. Yeah, oh my gosh. Also look at, there's a great, there's my foil yarn. It's okay, I gotta dump my whole bag out here. Come on, <laughs> where are you? Aha, I knew I'd find it. Look at that. What? Gorgeous. Is that foil? This is foiled yarn, so there's textile foiling going on here, so it has some. That's beautiful. Ooh, gold, you know, I like, I like metal, <laughs> so there we go. Oh, Who Laura said like? cotton, not cotter, oh, she meant to say. Yeah, cotton you can definitely <laughs> use, not cotter. I was like, what's cotter? A new textile? I'll take it. I need some. I don't have any yet. So there you go, there's some, there's some foiled yarns. So you can use any of it, all of it, experiment. There's a really cool hashtag that you should check out on Instagram. If you're on Instagram, it's called hashtag weave weird. Ooh. And it has some very inspiring um, tapestry techniques that you can take a look at for any of the projects that you wanna do with this. So, oh my gosh, okay, back to this necklace. Jeez, I forgot we were even making a necklace. <laughs> okay, so look, I have all my ends tied on one. I got them almost all tied on the other. So I got my last one here. I'm gonna go ahead and tie the end to itself once, twice, three times a lady. 
<laughs> okay. So there we go. So I've tied it. So now it's all, for the most part, it's all secure. Ta-da, beautiful. You see this side? Oh, it's so nice and pretty. So there we go. All right, so then to finish this, look, I had mine attached, but you could just, if you didn't look, snip, snip, and you can put any sort of material you want on this oh. side. So for the, for the necklace part, you can put an actual metal chain, you can put this yarn, you can put anything you like. So I'm gonna just, as it's already connected, look, I'm just gonna use my connected string. So I'm just gonna measure out what looks like to be about a, get out of here, Loom. <laughs> a normal necklace size. So a little short kind of necklace maybe. Like a little, you know, in vogue choker kind of thing. So there Ooh. we go. I'm gonna cut it a little longer just so I have room to tie. I'm gonna tie this together. Uh, Joey. Yeah. Someone named Joey. Ooh, I rarely get someone who shares my name. Go on. <laughs> Wants to know if you could make a pair of booty socks, like a pair of slippers to wear around the house. Sure. Great. Again, we're really, what can you make? Right, Joey, make them, please. Make Tag them. Us. Send them. Send a pic to me. Send me your pattern. Send yeah. me your ideas. I love it. So look here. I'm gonna take my tapestry needle or my safety pin in my case. And we're gonna go ahead and tuck in some of these ends so that we don't have all of this mm. hanging out here. <laughs> we want it to be nice and neat and pretty. So look here, you can see Ooh, la la, little necklace happening. Hold on, I don't wanna have a little open safety pin. Ooh, a little necklace happening. <gasps> look at guys, it's coming pan together. Pan out, pan out. Ooh, yeah, come on. <laughs> ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, look, so here we go. Gotta get back to work, enough chit chat. I could stay here all day, so if anyone doesn't have anything else to do, just hang out here with me. <laughs> I wish I could stay all day. So look, I'm gonna turn it to the back of my weaving, okay? So I'm gonna use, you see the open spots here on my weaving? You see that like a little bump, 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 right? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go ahead and look, I'm gonna take my tapestry needle, or again, my case, my safety pin. I'm just gonna thread it through. So I'm gonna kind of weave this in. So look, I went, Un I went under, so I'm gonna go over the next bump, then under the next bump. And then, look, I'm just gonna circle back and go, because I went over this one, I'm just gonna go under it. There we go. Done, look and that. snip, that's it. So look, I can now take that off and I can do the next one. So you just continue doing that until they're all woven in. Okay, so look, I can go over or under this one, over, under. Does anyone have any questions about what he's currently doing? So right now I'm currently finishing my weaving. I'm weaving in my ends so that it's all neat and pretty. Does anyone have any questions about this? Did you come up with this all yourself? This idea? Yes. Uh, I mean, sure, but I did not come up with tapestry weaving or a tapestry <laughs> woven necklace myself. Uh, no, I definitely didn't. All right, so you're gonna continue doing that. So you see how you have the woven in ends here. Because you see, look, now on the front, nice and neat and pretty. So look, we're just gonna pretend, because I think we don't have the whole amount of time left, to look, you're gonna weave those in until, there you go, done. Oh, Joey, I can actually answer this question. Okay. He said, did you make that t-shirt yarn yourself or did you buy it at the store? Oh, and the answer is? The answer is, uh, didn't you use? Combo. Uh, yeah, it's a combo. <laughs> That's a trick question, everyone, <laughs> trick question. He both so can anyone answer me this question? Which did I use for the warp and which did I use for the weft? Ooh, okay. does anybody know store-bought for the warp or store-bought for the weft? Waiting for those answers. Okay, so look, my neck, while we're waiting, look, my necklace is finished. Whoa. Ta-da. Beautiful. And that was so simple. So all my, so we're just gonna pretend, look, ta-da, camera ready. All my ends are woven in. So let's say, like, look, it's coming around right now in that circle pick up on the screen. The gray weaving has some of those fringe ends on it. So I just wanna show you how to make some quick fringe. So you can take, to, to adorn the bottom of this necklace, because maybe you want something with a little bit more pizzazz than mm. just this. 
Uh, Marie says you bought the warp and you made the west. Yeah, that's right, Marie. <gasps> Woo, go Ooh, Marie. A plus student. <laughs> so let's see here. I'm gonna use some, cause look, I'm gonna do a little of it later anyway. I'm gonna use some of my silver yarn. Oh yeah. And I'm gonna make some silver fringe. So I'm gonna cut a piece, mm, probably about seven inches long. I am not measuring any of this. That is not my style. If it's your style, that's great. It's just not me. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cut a few here. So you can, of course, elaborate and continue this. So look, I'm gonna take my silver yarn, which is gonna become my fringe, and I'm gonna fold it in half. Tanya says go. this is so cool. Thanks, Tanya. It is fun. <laughs> and it definitely is cool. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put, hold on, see, I have to turn this around because I'm, I'm not used to doing it backwards. Okay, <laughs> so I'm gonna put, you see there's a little loop now here, a little loop-de-loop. -loop. So I'm gonna put my loop, I find one of the ends here on my weaving, and I put my loop through the end. So now look, I have a loop of my fringe, and the little tails of my fringe through a loop of my weaving. So then I take the two tails and I go ahead and put it through my loop. And now I, oops, <laughs> I pull and there's my fringe. So pretty. So then you can continue adding. So I folded my fringe piece in half. So whatever length you kind of want the fringe to finish, you have to cut it to twice that length because you're gonna fold it in half. So this long, long piece is only gonna end up being about half that final length. So I'm gonna continue adding there. So I've put my loop through, oops. So I got my loop of my fringe, my two tail ends through the piece of my weaving, put the two tail ends through the loop, and now I pull. So everyone say pull. And there's my fringe. So now I've added some Bling bling to my necklace. So I'm gonna continue with just a few more pieces and then I wanna show you something else. So there we go, fold it in half. Does anyone have any questions out there about the fringe? Um, well, not quite about the fringe, okay. but Joey came a little late and has a quick question. Yes, to Joey. make the t-shirt yarn, do you just cut the strips, then stretch each strip, and then tie them together? You cut the strips. Oh, you can find, try to find a tutorial online, but what I did is I cut my fabric, I folded the tube of the t-shirt in half, almost all the way with overlap. I cut that and then I cut it into a spiral. So it's kind of a complicated technique. Yes. And I wish we had more time to tell you, but we gotta move on. But yes. try to look up making your own t-shirt yarn online. There's probably a few postings. Yes. Um, or about go it. back in the in Oh this. yeah, or go back in the video because yes. you can do that. Because he did show us. It's step live by step. and recorded, so I showed you. So go back to the video. There we go. <laughs> Blam -um. Okay, so look, ta-da. There's your beautiful silver fringe. Oh necklace so you can obviously add a lot more fringe i'm just showing you the technique of how to add it so if it was me i would just like fringe it out mm. okay oh yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i would just you know add all the glitter okay Ta -da. Barbara, barbara said she's done fringe on her scarves Ooh, there you go barbara you got it you're ready to go <laughs> you're ready to fringe okay so look now i'm going to show you some new techniques so we just did some uh, plain weaving so i want to show you in keeping with this whole fringe piece I want to show you some pile weaving. So pile weaving is just creating like a like a like a um, like a pile carpet, mm. same kind of thing. So look, I got fringe all over this piece. So you can see here, I've already done a row of weaving. So look, I have much smaller little pieces for my pile. Mm. So look, I put the same as here with putting it under some of the um, weaving. So look, I went ahead. I'm kind of alternating between two. So I have six strings: two, four, six. So I went ahead and put it under the center two, and then I'm putting it through the group of three. So I, the last one I did was two, so I'm gonna do three. So I'm doing two and three, two and three, so it makes this kind of even piling. So look, I put my strip underneath two warp strings. So it doesn't matter, you can do this wherever you want. You can do this in the middle, you can do it on the side. So I put it underneath two, 
So now you can see here that I'm gonna pull that up. So you see there's a little loop. Mm. So I take my two strings and I put them. It's a little harder when you have these big old man hands and these tiny little pieces. Okay. <laughs> Justin says, for a bigger project, I guess you could use a cardboard from a refrigerator box. Oh, yes. Brilliant, Justin. Brilliant. And send me the end result of that. Yes. So there we go. Look, I did those two. So now I'm going to do my next two. So I take my fringe piece. I put it underneath those next two warp strings. I pull the loop up in the middle. And then I put the end of the fringe through that loop. You've and inspired I... Barbara to try this at home. Ooh, all right, Barbara. It's fun, it's easy, it's really low commitment, because look, I, I could take this right now. I gotta go, bye, see you guys, cool. And I can come back to that, mm -hmm. and then it'll be a-okay. Nothing's gonna fall apart, nothing's gonna happen to it. Good little project to do in the car, good to do while you're waiting. I love that sparkle. So, you see I've done one, two, and now I'm gonna do my third little group here. So like I was saying before, who was the person who asked about doing with big fabric pieces? Was that Barbara? She's so inspired. Actually, a lot of people asked about oh, that. Oh, okay, so look, for my fabric people, look, this is the same idea. Coming up next, coming up, coming up, pay attention. Okay, so look, I pulled that down, ta-da. So there's my pile. So look, to keep my pile, because if I just kept doing that and kept going pile all the way up, it's not, first of all, it's not connected. Look, they're all, it's three It's little three separate little columns. So I gotta keep it connected and woven together. So look, I gotta take my weaving poop, the wrong piece, wrong gray. Mm -hmm. Can you tell what my favorite color is, anyone? Gray? No, mm, gray. <laughs> Light heather gray, perfect. So look, you can see that I have, now I'm gonna secure it with this row. So look, if I was doing my big old fabric weaving, I got my big fabric strip here, so now I gotta secure it with a smaller yarn. So I just go through with a smaller yarn, and this is my security yarn. So I'm just gonna go through and weave it in one time. So see, I've just woven the next row. And Hi. now I'm gonna repeat my pile. So look, there we go. So I wove in between. So I did my pile, and then I did my weaving. So you see I did the one, two, three groups. So now I'm gonna do two groups on the inside. So it's going three, and then the two are filling in the spaces in between the three. So I'm gonna do pile that goes here and here. I like this little, cool. Thanks. So you're gonna do that, look here. So we're gonna go under those two. So you can do this piling anywhere. I'm just doing it in this kind of particular pattern. You can do whatever you like as far as the pattern. Um, and just experiment with that. But I'm just doing it so that it makes a nice even pile. So I'm pulling on those two middle ones. We'll cut me a new strip or pile here. Joey, could you say what your website was one more time? Sure, my website is my name, so it's really easy to remember. <laughs> uh, JoeyCasey.com. So just my name, J-O-E-Y-C-A-S-E-Y.com. There you go, Heidi. Thanks for asking, Heidi. Ooh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so look, I finished, look, we're doing my next row. So I did those two things a pile. There we go. So look, now it's filled in the space that wasn't filled in before. So I've got this whole beautiful silver necklace here. So then I'm gonna continue weaving with my little security yarn back the other way and continue. So guess what? Bam, I'm already showing you another, a new skill. We gotta move on to the next thing. So I wanna show you some other cool things before we are done. So look, there you go, okay? So then let me show you one more thing because you've got your plain weaving, your fringe making, which is the same as your pile making. Ooh la la, look, I'll give you the same direction. Ooh, so <laughs> one is just a lot more. Fringe. So the next thing I wanna show you really quickly is just some striping. So I'm just gonna continue on my pile one. So look, I've got this other ready to go, bam, red yarn. <laughs> so here, look, I'm gonna grab one of my tapestry needles, and look, I wanna show you what to do. Put my, put my yarn through there. So look, I did a um, under, over, under, over, so I'm gonna do over, under. I'm just gonna keep weaving. 
So watch, I'm gonna make a one, one stripe. So you just have to keep the same ratio. So if you're gonna do, I like to do um, even ratios. So I'll do two rows of red. So I'm gonna do two rows of red, two rows of gray. So look, I started on this side. So look, I'm gonna weave back to the same side. Margaret wants to know if you sell these on your site. Do I sell these on my site? No, I do not. I sell skills and education, <laughs> not products. Because I like for you to make the products yourself. I would rather show you the skills to make it than make it for you. Because that's part of the fun. So look, I've done my two stripes of red. So look, I got my loose end of my gray here. So I'm just gonna carry it up the side. That's how you can see, look, it's coming right around. Perfect timing, awesome. You can see on the rotating picture on the right side that look, I made my stripes. So I did two rows of red, now I'm gonna do two rows of gray. So my red started and ended on the same side. So now I'm just gonna continue the same weaving pattern, over, under, over, under. So look, one row, two rows. Yeah, come on. Okay, so you see? And look, I don't have to, I don't have to keep cutting my yarn. I don't have to keep changing things out. It's all connected. Less hassle at the end too. A lot less ends to weave in because if you do any sort of things with yarn, that can kind of be the bane of your existence. Okay, so look, I've done my red stripe. I've done my gray stripe. So now I'm going to continue with my red stripe. Mm. A little bit of accent for everybody. So one, two, and I'm just gonna continue that all the way up. So now I've done a pile weaving with some striping. Wow. So look, this everyone, this took me what? Like, I don't know, a minute, two minutes? Yeah, right? I don't know, I have no concept of time. <laughs> time is irrelevant. Okay, so look, there we go. Look, I'm gonna continue. So then, just as I did the first one with the finishing, the same finishing for this, cutting the back, tying them together two at a time, Trying to leave them in here so you've got more control. Tying that necklace piece around. And there you go. So stripe, stripe back. Joey, your yeah. friend Joey <gasps> Ooh, says- Joey, I like hearing from Joey. <laughs> that the second one that you were doing, I think he's talking about the one with all the fringe. With the pile weaving, uh-huh. He said it would make a beautiful rug. It would definitely make a beautiful rug. So here you go. Okay. So does anyone have any, because we're almost over now, but does anyone have any last minute questions out there? Questions, compliments, criticisms, <laughs> anything makes me better. So if you're like, you didn't explain any of this, that was horrible. <laughs> Let me know. What is your favorite tapestry? My favorite tapestry, my favorite tapestry. Yeah, unicorn tapestry, of course. Great. Yes, Paul. <laughs> Isn't that everyone's favorite ta favorite tapestry? Yeah. And living in New York City, I can go visit it. So there you go. You gotta come if you don't live here already. <laughs> All right. So look, I'm just gonna continue weaving this. So look, I'm gonna finish out my stripes here and fill this whole thing because I'm making this very cool necklace. Caitlin says she hopes to see more from you. Oh, hopefully you will, Caitlin. So, um, look, I've, and now I'm finished. So that, that one's finished. So then you'll have to stay tuned. Well, maybe we'll have to have a part two because here I'm gonna give everyone a little teaser. Uh-oh. Interlocking. So you can have two colors at once, but that's for next time because we don't have enough time for that. <laughs> All right, so look, there we go. There's my necklace. Look, I made almost two necklaces in that hour. Boop, 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 boom. Thank you so much, Joey. This You're so welcome, so Gina. amazing to watch. There you go. Maybe make something other than gray. Look, you can do pink. You can do that. Here, let's end with a big pile of textiles. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, yeah. Who doesn't like that? Right. Oh, yeah, our foiled yarn. Wouldn't that make some nice piling here? Look at me, everyone. You can be an expert at crafts and not be organized and beautiful, just like me. <laughs> there you go. All right, thanks, everyone. This was fun, fun, fun. Oh, Joey, I hope you have a great day, too. 
kind of weird saying your own name to yourself. <laughs> Paul, you are a tree. Oh my gosh, what's going on here? <laughs> are we talking to a weaving? Okay, there we go. Thank you so much, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. See you next week. Bye.